Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, staying alive, staying alive. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, staying alive. Nashville Predators stay alive in the playoff race. 3-2 win over the Flames. This is the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Much to Anne's chagrin, I was not going to go falsetto with that full introduction. Thank you for listening to the Locked On Predators podcast, and thanks for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, available to you wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer and editor at InsideThePreds.com. Today's show is also brought to you by Fan Duel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. Well, <laughs> they're still in it, and they're still in it. it Bless might, us, everyone. It might be 18 more hours, but they're still in it. They are. I mean, it just, we all, I think, know how this is going to end. Like, we really all know how this is going to end. Do we at this point? (laughs) I I was confident I knew how it was going to end, like, three weeks ago. Yeah, I guess it's, we all know eventually how it's going to end. But this team just is like, look, we have more to learn. We need to, what is it? There's a quote that they use. I think in Dead Poets Society, where one of the poets says, you want to suck the marrow out of life or something like that. And I'm like, that's the Nashville Predators. I'm assuming it was a poet or maybe it was like my grandfather when he was intoxicated. I don't know. But, you know, go with what I'm saying there. Suck the marrow out of life. That's this team. They are just going to get everything out of this regular season experience that they can before they say, "Okay, we're going to sit down now. Yeah. Uh, It's too bad for they were sucking something besides marrow for the first four months of the season. Yeah. Uh, You know, hey, maybe we'd be in a different situation right now. Yeah. Uh, You know, Preds beat the Flames three to two in a shootout last night. Real quick, here's basically uh, where that leaves the Nashville Predators. Uh, Two games left. Mm -hmm. Winnipeg won last night over San Jose, too. So Predators are still alive. But the ball is completely in the Jets' court at this point. Basically how it is, is if the Jets get points of any kind in their last two games, they're in. Right. And if the Predators lose any of their next two games in any fashion, overtime, whatever, that's it. It needs needs to be the Predators win both games. The Jets lose both games in regulation. Uh, and, uh, you know, I will point out that they play the same teams. Jets it's have Minnesota. Yeah, Jets have Minnesota tonight, Colorado on Thursday. Both of those on the road. Mm-hmm. Reds play Minnesota on Thursday, Colorado on Friday. Both those at home. So the schedule favors Nashville, I guess. Yeah, I would say a little. Here's my other hitch that I hope happens in the giddy up is if. Things are more settled between one, two, and three with Dallas, Colorado, and Minnesota. Maybe Dallas or maybe Colorado comes in that last game and says, Look, y'all, you're cute, but we're going to just go ahead and rest some guys. And maybe that gives Nashville just a smidge of a chance if there's still any chance left after the second to the last game for both these teams but yeah, look I mean, it's it's a it's a slog this is a two-game slog and and it doesn't look great i, I mean we're gonna have to see what happens between now and thursday because right. there is a big difference in that central division uh between the playing seattle in the first round mm-hmm. and playing whichever team of colorado dallas and minnesota doesn't win the central the yeah. way the, the way the playoff standings are hoped up. So everybody, everybody is going to go balls to the wall for that number one spot in the central 
Uh, so they get that easier first round matchup. So, you know, who knows? Minnesota, uh, you know, if they beat Winnipeg, they're still going to be in the conversation going into that last game. Uh, so that might not bode well for the Predators, but you would hope maybe that Colorado game, if things are settled, remember, that's the makeup game uh, from that's the whole right. Bridgestone Arena pipe thing, which that's feels right. like 50 years ago at this point. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe Colorado, you know, has some stuff figured out by Thursday when the rest of the teams finish, uh, and then can figure out, okay, well, we can rest some stuff because, you know, we yeah. know we're going to have this spot or whatever. Maybe, right. maybe that's the best case scenario for the Preds. Having both at home, I think certainly helps. Yeah. Uh, let's get to last night's game, shall we? Because this was, this was a game and this was a game that was played. Yes. Uh, starts off with Igor Afanasyev. First career goal, uh, thanks to a big oopsie from Jacob Markstrom. Uh, give Mark <laughs> Jankowski credit for some really good forecheck on that play. Yes. Flames set it up in the second, and then the third period was just kind of a brouhaha all around. Zach Sanford scored. Michael Backlund scored a couple minutes after that. Went into a shootout. Flames scored first on the last shot. Last shot of the first three rounds with the puck and a season on a stick. Cody Glass scores on Jacob Markstrom. Right after that, Tommy Novak scores the winner, eliminates the Flames, keeps the Predators alive. 3-2 win for Smashville. And what's your one word to describe that win? My one word to describe that win is David Copperfield. So several years ago, I went to Las Vegas with my mom, which is, if you know my mom, not a sentence that you would ever think anybody would ever say. My mom is a delightful, wonderful woman who just Vegas is not her scene, but she had to go to Vegas for a conference. I joined her and we I said, hey, game next time, go to a what game? Go to a Knights game next time. You're the one that told me they're super fun, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we could do that. My mom suddenly loves hockey. That's a whole nother story for another day. Huh. Um, but we, while we were there, we had a little bit of downtime and decided, hey, David Copperfield is performing. Let's go see the this world famous illusionist. And I'll be honest, when I was going in to see David Copperfield, I'm like, he's going to be so great. He's going to pull a rabbit out of a hat, you know, or he's going to saw a lady in half. Like, I just didn't know the production that is David Copperfield. But here's what I saw when I went to see David Copperfield at MGM Grand. David Copperfield, and I I literally, shit you not, made an entire real car disappear on stage. And I know it was a real car because he got in and sat in it and invited a lady from the audience to come up and he drew, he picked her by random, he threw a ball in the audience and wherever it landed, that person came up to make sure it was a car. And I was like, I'm on, I got this figured out. Like, I know how this is going to go. Like some guy from backstage is going to do something. And where our seats were, I could see side stage and I could see backstage. And I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I'm on to you, David Copperfield. Y'all, I don't know to this day how he did it. It will be one of my first questions for Jesus someday. I swear to you though, the entire car just vanished. And that is what this game was to me. I don't know for sure how it happened, although I've got some good ideas and we're going to talk about them later yeah. in this episode. But, and I didn't have the right expectations going in, but I left thinking, I'm not sure what happened, but I think I believe in something that I'm not supposed to believe in because David Copperfield makes cars disappear. That was me after the Nashville Predators game. Look, I see what this roster's made up of. I get it, y'all. Everybody in Nashville knows. We don't need you telling us, like, this is an AHL roster. Please stop telling us that. Please stop telling us that. Please stop telling us, you know. We're, we're not the people you need to tell <laughs> that to. Yes, like, we hear you. We're aware. But what this roster has done is what they did last night. They made the Calgary Flames disappear, a team that is built for a deep playoff run that went out and put together, you know, brought in Nazem Kadri, And, you know, they've got all these big players with tons of experience, these veterans and Jacob Markstrom. And they're like this. We are in on a deep playoff run. 
And the Predators and their AHL roster, just David Copperfield, the Cal Calvary, Calgary Flames. And it was, I don't know what I just saw, but I believe in it. Yeah, did somebody throw like a little ball of fire to check to make sure the flames were real? <laughs> I was like, oh, no, 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 that's really Brett Ritchie taking the, the <laughs> penalty shot in overtime. Yeah, your eyes are not deceiving you, even yeah. though of a lot of Flames fans probably wish they were. Um, yeah, for, for me and my one word to describe this game, not as good as David Copperfield, but a, a great name nonetheless, Neville Longbottom from oh, Harry Potter. Yes. Uh, in the seventh, no, the eighth movie, seventh book, eighth movie, Deathly Hollows Part Two. Uh, there is a scene in which Neville is trying to lure all these Death Eaters across a bridge he's going to blow up. And he's like being chased by the Death Eaters and he starts to blow up the bridge. He's still on the bridge. And there's this dramatic scene where he's trying to get back to the, the solid land where all his Hogwarts mates are. You see all these Death Eaters falling to their deaths behind them. And then all of a sudden you see the bridge in front of Neville fall out. He goes, whoa, and just disappears beyond the cliff. And ever, all the little Hogwarts mates are like, Neville? Thinking he's dead, reach out. They just see this one hand on top of the ledge. And they're like, who is it? And then Neville just pulls himself up off the ledge and just smiles and goes, I think that went well. <laughs> that is this game for the Nashville Predators on their Final shot, no room for error, had to cling by their hands the edge of the cliff that would have taken him into the offseason. Probably still going to go into the offseason, fall off that cliff eventually. <laughs> There's global warming and erosion and all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> but for one night, you know, the Predators did what they had to do by the skin of their teeth, by the yes. tips of their fingers, held on for dear life pulled themselves back on solid ground and kept their playoff dreams alive. Magic. Magic. It is. Well, it's Harry Potter. Also, none of that happened in the book, which is the better version of that. But hey, oh. you know, Deathly Hollows Part 2. Good for something, right? Yeah. Um, more, more Harry Potter discourse coming up in just a second. We'll also talk about the game last night. Let's talk about the shootout itself because there is a lot to unpack with how that all unfolded probably a little bit on both sides we'll get into that in a second and talk about where the preds go from here first though i want to mention today's show brought to you by fan duel sportsbook it's time people grand slams no hitters double plays cheap ballpark hot dogs they're all back there's no better place to get on the mlb action than FanDuel, america's number one sports book that's because right now new customers can step up to the plate with a no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars just go to fanduel.com slash lock on uh, slash locked on to sign up place your first bet and get up to one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if you don't win you can bet on a variety of things from just straight up money line to props like whether aaron judge is going to get a home run that day whether a pitcher is going to go over or under the strikeouts that they have listed for him or you can build a same game parlay with your favorite matchup of the day don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join fanduel today just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball and official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, Ann, let's talk about the shootout, shall we? Yeah. Uh, probably the most important dramatic shootout the Predators have found themselves in over the last uh, five years at yes. least. I can't remember one that had this much impact as this game. Right. It's certainly a lot to unpack. Yes. Yeah, this was a really dramatic way for all of this to pan out, but very interesting way, and Nick and I kind of talked about this, um, just to set the stage for how the shootout unfolds for the Nashville Predators. They had this shootout win over, I think it was the Vegas Golden Knights. And so I got to ask John Hines, how do you, you know, don't give away any trade secrets, but how do you 
figure out who you're putting out on the ice in what order in the shootout. And he actually went on to explain, this is a very complicated process and it involves a lot of people besides John Hines and his gut. So Ben Vanderklok, who is the goalie coach, spends a ton of time prepping for these games and studies the opposing goaltender kind of targets where are maybe some weaknesses, what are some shots that are a little bit more difficult for that goaltender to handle. And then he and their video coach work together and they compile a list for John Hines before every single game of a deep lineup for a shootout. So before the game even starts, which I think is interesting, Hines has a list of here is the order in which you want your shootout players to go. And it's based on the previous success of those who have, you know, gone in shootouts. For instance, Phil Tomasino went first last night. He actually has a very good shootout percentage when you factor in his shootouts in the AHL this season. So he's somebody that you're going to see pretty early up in the lineup. But again, it's also based off of how does this player perform with the shots that are the biggest weaknesses for the goaltenders. So I think it's interesting to note that it isn't based on how did this player do over these last 60 minutes right? or how does John Hines feel about them? It's all actually very analytical and, and put together before every game. And John Hines points out, this is not like a list of three, like it goes all the way through the lineup. Like if this shootout went on and on last night, John Hines is going to look at a piece of paper. So it's not just based off of who does, you know, quote unquote, who does John Hines like, you know, or anything like that. So first up, Phil Tomasino for the Nashville Predators. Yeah. It's uh, anybody that remembers, uh, I think it was 2013, 2014, maybe the 11 round shootout. Uh, between the Predators and Red Wings. It just went on forever and ever. It was Jimmy Howard and Pekka Rene standing on their heads on both ends. It was just like, oh, this is is quite a lot of shootout happening right here. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And then uh, here's my thing. You know, and we talk about, you know, we want our young players to get some big time experience. We want them to go out and play what feels like a playoff atmosphere even if you don't get into the the playoffs at this point Mm -hmm. you know you want your team to go out there and get that kind of experience of playing in a big time game in some big time moments and that is exactly what happened last night to cody glass and tommy novak exactly the kind of situations we're talking about Cody glass. We talked about him all year long has kind of stepped up, taken over that at least a top six center role. He's become just kind of an everyday guy right down the middle. He went out there. If he misses that shot, that's not only the end of the game, that's the end of the season. The oh, gosh, Predators playoff yeah. hopes end right there. If he wins, they have a chance to keep it alive. If he gets past Markstrom, it came down to him. Puck on his stick, one last play to keep your season alive. That's the experience we're looking for. You know, guys like Philip Forsberg, Matt Duchesne, Roman Yossi, they've been in situations like that before. This young core has not, at least on the NHL level. And Cody Glass went out there, had that moment and scored. You know, Mm -hmm. he was able to succeed on that do or die moment. And then same thing. Uh, the next next pred shooter, Tommy Novak, after a good UC Saro save, of course, Tommy Novak with the puck on his stick, a chance to keep the Predators' hopes alive and send Calgary home. Remember, that was the other half of this equation, too, was that the Flames uh, would have been eliminated with a loss of any kind. Preds go out there and t- puck on his stick, Tommy Novak is the hero gets the hero shot the hero moment and I, well, the best thing i loved is i think it was bally sports that saw this you know they show the predators bench and the Preds <laughs> bench is going crazy jumping up and down hurtling themselves onto the ice to get out there and then they just cut to tommy novak who's just like stone face just skating back yeah. One little like hand up ready to like high five. And then he sees the <laughs> cavalry just coming at him to jump on him. And he's like, oh, okay. Uh, you know, but it, but that's the kind of, you know, 
the swagger, the yes. tear off the shoulder kind of, I, I, this isn't a big deal for me. Like, I'm just going to go out there and do my job kind yeah. of experience you want these guys to have. And I mean, like I said, Fred's playoff chances could end uh, by 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, if the, if the yeah. Jets beat the Wild or or get a point against the Wild, but you know you went out there on a do or die game with with a chance to keep your fate in your own hands, and these young players did that, and I think that's very crucial for their growth. Yeah, and I love what you're saying because the way that you make a champion is not always in a championship game. The way that you build somebody who is going to be able to compete for the Nashville Predators two or three years from now are in those moments right there. You know, when we were in black belt training, we talked about your black belt test isn't when you earn the black belt. Your black belt test is when you get up at eight, you know, seven in the morning on Saturday morning and run five miles. This was the five, you know, one of those five mile runs for Cody Glass and Tommy Novak. And it's not... Even just that, you know, a shootout is a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's the pressure that comes with that. And you have to be able to kind of develop an immunity to that pressure. I'm not going to lie to you like the mom in me when I see, you know, it was Phil Tomasino and Luke Evangelista and Cody Glass and Tommy Novak going out there. The mom in me is like so nervous for them because this is a ton of pressure for guys who are relatively new to this level of pressure. And, you know, Tomasino and Evangelista didn't score, but they were in those big moments. They know what that feels like. Sometimes when you're not successful, you're you're still learning. But to have Glass and Novak, especially two guys who I think everybody can agree look like they're going to be foundational pieces, at least next season for the Nashville Predators, that's when you build a champion. You know, that's when you develop a player into somebody who can perform like Philip Forsberg or Matt Duchesne or Roman Yossi or UC Soros, who, you know, we're going to have to talk about UC Soros. Yeah, let, let's not point out or let's not overlook the fact either that um, he, he stepped up too. Like his season was on the line too. And he came through with another just absolutely stand down performance. Yeah. Yep. And a lot of people are talking about, you know, is this team anything but UC Soros? Is this team really anything without UC Soros? And I think that's an interesting conversation. And here's where I'm going to land on that. And, and yes, UC Soros is winning some games for the Nashville Predators. Last night, UC Soros won this game. And, you know, but of course, you have to have more than UC Soros. This was not by any stretch of the imagination Nashville's most flawless game. And we'll talk about a couple areas they have to improve. But what you have in UC Soros is really a, an extraordinary talent. But what you also have in UC Soros is an opportunity that you can see what consistency does. Just like what you're talking about in the shootout. UC Soros has had consistent opportunities in these situations. And some of these younger players are just now getting that. Saros is the most consistent good player on the Nashville Predators team, certainly down this stretch when we're missing Yossi and you're missing Forsberg. Duchesne may be consistent is not necessarily a word I would use for Duchesne's season overall, but I say that with love and not out loud to my husband. But Saros is consistent, but again, consistency is another thing that you develop with time. And so, yes, Saros is the rock right now, but he's giving opportunities for Novak and Glass and Sherwood and Evangelista and these guys to be in situations that are going to refine them as well. I don't think there's a downside to, to what Saros is doing and just keep your team in it. Unless you want to tank, which, I mean, that's a whole conversation for another day. But, I mean, if, if you're the Nashville Predators, like, you have some good young talent. Like, what's yeah. what's going to behoove this team better in the long run? Is it getting these guys an opportunity to play close, see what you need to kind of take that next step, and have Saros kind of be the bridge that keeps them – at least in the hunt while you build up this team and build this young, you know, you know, re-center the core around some young talent. 
I think, or, or is it, you know, having guys like Tommy Novak, Cody Glass spend, you know, six, seven years in mediocrity until they go and, you know, get traded at the deadline sometime down the future to, to a contender, like what's going to benefit your franchise more yeah. uh, to me. That's having a goaltender like Saros, who's willing to keep your team in it every single night. My thing, Ann, is when are people around the NHL going to give Saros the respect he deserves? It would be great if it were any minute now. If you see Saros is not in a long discussion, my friends, for a Vesna nomination right now, there is something not right in the NHL. And, and it makes me wonder, are we back to this whole market thing? Because there is no way that UC Saros should not be considered for a Vesna nomination right now. I get but everybody's like, Olmark, Olmark, but he's not in the top four right now. And, and, and what is that about? Do you think the, the favorite, the favorite is Lena Solmark, who of course, let's, let's, let's be fair. Like he's probably, totally win it, probably yep. should win it. Absolutely. But then you have Sorokin ahead of him, which I mean, oh. like that's it's the same thing as UC Soros. It's one guy keeping a bad team in the postseason hunt. Mm-hmm. Connor Hellebuck, fine, and then Jake Ottinger. You know, he's not even in the top five. And yeah. then you know he's he's tied with Shesterkin and Vasilevsky, and that's good company. But remember that that NHL PA players poll came out. It was like you know if you needed to win one game, who's the goalie you want? Soros wasn't in the top five for there. Uh, you know the the guys at the puck soup podcast, uh, you know, down goes Brown, Ryan Lambert, a couple yeah. prominent writers, you know, other writers around the league, when they talk about elite goaltenders and who's your elite goaltender, you know, they mention Igor Shesterkin, they mention Vasilevsky. They talk about Sorokin coming up. They talk about Hellebuck. They talk about, you know, Jake Ottinger this season. They, they never mentioned UC Saros, you know, Puck Soup again. When they did their all-star tiers list of, you know, mm-hmm. who's the best all-stars, UC Saros was in their bottom tier. How, what just, is that about? And what it's is just, that about? Yeah, I, it's, I don't know if it's a market thing. Like if UC Saros was having this season for, you know, the Toronto Maple Leafs or with a better team in front of them, like would more people – point out what he's been able to do over the last few years mm-hmm. probably i would say he gets far more you know recognition i mean look at you know Stuart skinner is a very mid goaltender yeah. and he was an all-star this year and people are talking right. about it's like oh oilers gotta build around Stuart skinner you know the preds have one of the who's somebody who's been statistically one of the best goaltenders in the league over the past four years on yes. the team and it just doesn't seem like his name comes up enough when we talk about who are the elite goaltenders in the league he's been more consistent than igor shesterkin you know he's had better numbers than Ilya sorokin uh, he's having a better year this year than andre vasilevsky but it just it just seems that you know, no matter how much, you know, he kicks his way into that elite tier of goaltending, no matter how much he fights his way into being among the best in the NHL in terms of numbers, it it just doesn't seem like he's getting the kind of recognition he deserves. And it's frustrating when you put you what UC Soros is doing in context because UC Soros is putting up these numbers in front of a team <clears throat> that traded off some of its biggest pieces at the deadline. I mean, you lost Matthias Ekholm defensively. Yeah. So that's huge, you know, as far as who is in front of him, who, you know, who is defending in front of him. And then you have Forsberg out. You have Roman Yossi out. Your two best defensemen, two of the best defensemen really in the league. If you look at, you know, top 20 defensemen, you've got Matias Ekholm, you've got Roman Yossi, and they're not on the ice. And he is playing in front of a young team pieced together because of injury and trade. In that context, tell me what other goaltender would be able to get teams to the point where the Predators are right now. I, I got nothing. Uh, yeah, Connor, uh, apparently I got Elias nothing. Sorokin, Connor Hellebuck, but you know why? Why isn't UC Saros being mentioned? Right. In with their names. Yeah. That, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah, uh, I don't get it. 
I he, don't get it. He's not going to get a Vezina nomination this year, but I think I, I think it should be mentioned that this is one of the most impressive goaltending seasons I think we've ever seen in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, and I'm including, you know, Pekka Rene's Vezina, you know, when I'm including some of those Thomas Focun years, those early, you know, 2010s Pekka Rene years. This is most in, one of the most impressive just yes. because I think the context of it absolutely matters. Yeah. Um, Impactful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we'll see what happens. Maybe UC Soros puts up a couple more years like that. Maybe a better team in front of Soros uh, helps them get into that echelon of top talent. Uh, the other thing, Anne, is tonight – but by, by the time we do our show tomorrow morning, we'll find out if the Predators are still alive or not. Uh, the Jets play the wild tonight. It is a, if you're a Predators fan, a must win for the Minnesota wild. You want to be sharing as hard as you can uh, for <laughs> Minnesota because a point of any kind by the Jets in any of these last two games knocked the Predators out of contention. Yep. Let's go we'll, wild. We'll see what happens. Go wild. We're we're all behind you, Ryan Hartman. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll have a recap one way or the other tomorrow. And where can people find your work? You can find my work online at insidethepreds.com. You can find me on Twitter at ank underscore mama on ice. You can find me on penaltyboxradio.com. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. Be sure to follow the show also LO underscore Predators. And however you're watching, whether you're watching us on YouTube or streaming us on your favorite podcasting platform, hit that subscribe button. So you always know when we have fresh content out for you. That's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back tomorrow with a new episode. We'll see you then.